so it is yeah it's caleb caleb is with me um it is easter family time i'm in new york clinton new york where my uh younger brother max uh who's a professor professor max right sure. professor yeah. majeric that's right different last name half brother same mom different dads don't know if we'll include any of that, they but need to know all this. <laughs> I don't, I don't. anyway, uh, so yeah, Max is just swapping over some summer tires while I'm looking at his little Corolla that has a battery that continues to go dead. He replaced the battery last year. It's new and it sits, would you say about three weeks at a time Yeah. and it pretty much doesn't restart after that. And so the only thing that I've done so far. Oh, and by the way, I'm recording with my phone. I have nothing with me, but, well, I always travel with something, but I don't have any of my video stuff with me. So forgive this shakiness. Um, but all I've done so far is disconnected a meter to see what kind of voltage that he has on his system. And as you can see, we're at 1.8 volts and we should be at 12.6. So this is totally dead. And um, what we're going to do is check the charging system and then we're going to check this thing for a parasitic drain and caleb who is the man What's up? helped me in panama not no, panama no, it was in, uh, where were we <laughs> ohio oh yeah it was a mission trip <laughs> it's pretty close yes but, pretty, yeah. <laughs> we were we were in lorraine ohio and you helped me do a parasitic drain i actually have footage of that i don't think i ever produced it no maybe we'll do that sometime yeah. but we're doing the same thing we did in Lorraine for those people we were helping we're doing a parasitic drain test and uh, I don't know we'll see what we have so first thing I have to do is I need to jump this thing get it running and I'm just gonna use a little boost pack I have so Caleb you need to be my camera guy I got this little lithium-ion uh, battery jump pack which is kind of cool I pretty much travel with it now glad I did Two. You had your key in the ignition or you already did that? I just put it okay. in. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is the charging voltage and and Yeah, I don't know might be able to see that. Yeah. Uh, you see what it were at 14 volts, 14.3 and 13, and it's actually fluctuating a lot. And there's a lot of ripple to this, so I don't like that at all. Uh, that could be the result of the battery being totally dead. Let's change this scale. Look at all that ripple in there. I'm not going to panic yet because this, bat because this battery's dead. But Caleb, just so you know, 14.2, um, a fully charged battery is 12.6, so if you're charging at 14.2, that is going to charge the battery. That's what we want to see. The alternator is at least producing. Uh, that squeaky belt is super annoying. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to shut the car or I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to let this run for about 10 or 15 minutes to charge up this battery because I want to check the system with at least some kind of charge in the battery. I could use my jump pack instead of the battery, but I'm just gonna run it for a while. So I I misrepresented my younger brother here. It would be Dr. Majeric, not Professor. So Max, uh, uh, you guys can look him up too. He's he's a, a what's the word? A renowned 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 renown scientist. <laughs> he is a synthetic chemist, right? Major? Yeah. yeah. Doctor. Doctor of synthetic chemistry. <laughs> Doctorate. Something like that. Doctor and professor. Doctor and professor. Yeah. And so he, he can't teaches. A tire. And and yeah, and he can't change a tire. No, he can change a tire. I, I'm teaching him. But you guys can look him up. He's at Hamilton College here in New York, Clinton, New York, and uh, it is uh, Max Majeric. So you guys have to check him out. He's been published in everything. So I mean, he's kind of he's going to be the famous. Uh, one of the family here someday. No, gonna he's going to cure cancer or something. 
So anyway, yeah, so now you guys got to meet my my younger brother. He's 10 years younger than me, and uh, I've picked on him all his life. <laughs> okay. Now I pick on Caleb. <laughs> yes, now he takes it out on my children. All right, so I've had it running now for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and uh, my voltage levels are much, much better. Um, the last time we were looking at this, though, we were looking at it on a half a second screen so I changed it to five seconds let's go back to that for a comparison so you see the difference in the ripple that is in this and so I, I would just say as a warning do not over analyze alternator ripple when you have a completely dead battery and what I'll do is I'll put some links in the description of this video for some other videos I've done where I checked for alternator ripple or a diode uh, problem in an alternator. So you guys can get more familiar with that. I'm comfortable with this alternator. We're charging steady at 14.2 at idle. And um, I'm, I'm gonna let the car run for probably 10 more minutes to charge the battery. We don't have a battery charger with us. So we're gonna use the car. And I really wanna do tests again on this when I have at least a, a semi-decent charge on this battery and we're suspecting possibly a small parasitic drain we're not sure yet we'll see well I think it's been at least a half an hour of runtime uh, I think it's good enough let me show you guys what this looks like on a five second screen very very pleased with our voltage pattern right now again not worried about the alternator so shutting this down and we're going to do a parasitic drain test one of the things I like to look for whenever I'm doing case studies like this is aftermarket stuff and what I see right away is some type of either alarm or remote start that could be a red flag Max, does this have a remote start or alarm system? Remote start. Remote start? Yeah, yeah when I'm done, it's probably not going to. That's right, because we lost the remote start. Did you? <laughs> <clears throat> going to use my ammeter in this tool, and so to do that, we switch the top over, and I'll change my scales. I'll let you see the screen in a minute. And I want to connect this to the terminal so basically what, what what's happening is the electrons are leaving the battery they're going in my yellow terminal and then they're coming out being measured and they're coming out the black terminal into the car you see we're reading negative 130 milliamps so the minus just means my leads are reversed so um, over here just a little bit and yeah you just stay right there I'm just gonna switch these two I don't have to I could have left it at a minus now, if you look at our screen now, you can see 126 milliamps. It changed a little bit. So maximum allowable drain on this system is no more than 50 milliamps. And if you remember from Lorraine, Ohio, that guy that had that aftermarket stuff in his car, he had 50 milliamps and it was killing his battery once a month. So when we are finished, we are down to about 10 milliamps, and that's what we want to see. That is way too much. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just seeing that this has a, a light, and then my brother telling me that this has a remote start. I'm going to go under the dash and disable the remote start feed and see if that goes away. You stay where you're at, focused just where you are. I'm going to go under the dash and pull that, okay? It dropped point oh oh six. It was at point one two and now it's at or at point one two six now it's at point one two. So only only six milliamps, that's not enough. So I'm plugging the remote start only dropped us down six milliamps. And I'm actually kind of a, a dumbass because I have the door open. And when you have the door open, the interior lights will turn on. Yeah, what's wrong with you? 
that's a good question. Um, so I looked, and my interior light is not lit, but I need to shut the door to do this properly. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, and then we'll see what it looks like. And we have 11 milliamps. So the draw that I thought we had was just me leaving the door open. <laughs> However, <clears throat> I'm still concerned about that remote start. So I'm gonna plug everything back in. And then unplug it. And then see what we have here with the door shut. So I may have like kind of messed that up a little bit. But 10 milliamps is okay, that's acceptable. That shouldn't kill the battery. Mm -hmm. It could be he just has a battery problem. So charging system's good. And even though this battery's only a year old, he may need to get another battery. But I'm gonna plug this remote start stuff back in. All right, so Caleb's holding the camera for me. I'm going back inside, plugging the remote start back in the door. As soon as I open the door, we're gonna have some increase yeah. in voltage. Yeah. weird even though the interior light isn't on um, while well, there's a, a, a bulb on the dash that said that shows the, the door is is open and that's what's causing that anyway Remote start is back in. Jump by like eight milliamps. So that thing's drawing very little. Hey, your face is in the reflection on it. Is it? <laughs> so we were down, well, it's like double what it was. You know, I, the thing about a car that sits for a long period of time, any draw is not good. And Max, you said you lost the remote for this? Yeah. But still, 15, 16 milliamps shouldn't be enough to kill this battery. Um, I'm gonna, you keep focused on that. I'm gonna mess around with the doors. Where are we at, what, where are we at, Caleb? Uh, 0.016. How about now? 0.126. Okay. What about now? Oh, uh, 0.667. That was, I turned the interior light. 0.666 now. I turned the interior light switch on, that's what caused that, and that, that should draw. Uh, it's at 0.558. This has one of those delay off interior lights, I think. Let's kind of watch this for a second. That should drop now. Yeah, yeah, it's at point oh six one six. Point one six. Point zero one six. Point zero one six. No, no glove box light. Uh. This door handle's messed up, Max. How long's that been? That just the spring popped out. Okay. Where are we at, Caleb? Point oh one six. Point oh one six. I'm gonna disable this one more time. Close the door. I just unplugged the remote start again. Your head's in the reflection again. <laughs> so point zero one one. We're only talking five milliamps for that thing. But what? Okay, six milliamps. So double what we have. I'm I'm gonna leave that unplugged, Max. And uh, I want you to let me know how this does. Now our battery's not fully charged. We're only at like twelve two. Mm -hmm. um, even running it for a half an hour was not enough to fully charge this battery. Okay. 
Do you have a battery charger, that, like a trickle charger we can plug in? Like a little uh, yeah. two amp one? Yeah. That's uh, what we need to do. Like what I had in the car? No, not the jump pack, one that we plug into the house. Oh, no. You don't have one? Okay. Well, as a wrap up, that's how you check for a parasitic drain very quickly. And um, what we're, what our plan of attack is with only 10 milliamps, so we're leaving the remote start unplugged. My brother lost the remote anyway. All right, Max? Yep. Hey, there's Bo. You guys know Bo. Bo, say hi. Hi. <laughs> and uh, thank you, I'm, Caleb, I'm the best son. for being my, you're the best son. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for being my cameraman. And uh, Max, I want you to, I want you to, um, I want you to drive this thing and get this battery charged and then let it, you know, w it sits for a couple weeks, let me know. Yeah. Okay? No, not the and uh, we're going to leave this remote start unplugged. And uh, if, every, if you still have this issue, you need to put another battery in this. All right. Okay? All right, cool. Okay, one last piece I want you guys to see. Max, crank that for me. Um, I'll tell you when. When I connected the battery back up, it was 12.2, and I was explaining to my brother that 12.6 is fully charged, and we had it running for about 40 minutes. Should have been enough to get this thing to at least give me one crank. Go ahead and crank it. Let's... All right, so you can see that this battery is super dead, even after running for 40 minutes. Um, that in itself, Max, you need to change this battery. The, the bad part about these batteries, too, is when they're fully charged, it keeps them from freezing. When they're discharged, there's more water in the electrolyte. The battery will actually freeze, and it will kill the battery. So repeated dead batteries over the winter is not a good thing. Um, I, I believe that uh, our biggest part was you're not driving it for a month at a time, and we had a remote start that was putting double, almost double the amperage of what it what uh, it is without it. So we had 16 milliamps, um, 16, 17 milliamps with it and about 10 milliamps without. It's not a lot, but it is a drain. We're definitely leaving the remote start out and you definitely need to put a battery in this. Okay. And you have warranty, I think too, you said, right? Yeah. You should put another battery in this. I think you're gonna be fine.